everyone. Let me record this. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson, audiologist with Treble Health, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Powell Jastroboff, PhD, with this presentation tonight. This is the Tinnitus Relief Summit. This is day two of the Tinnitus Relief Summit, and Dr. Jastroboff is my personal mentor with everything about tinnitus, hyperacusis. When we look back over the last decades of who are the research professionals in our field, in this tinnitus community who have made a large impact, Dr. Jastroboff is right up there at the very top. Some describe him as the grandfather of tinnitus retraining therapy or of tinnitus in general. Um, he founded tinnitus retraining therapy after years of studying uh, behavioral science and uh, neuroscience. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jastroboff to explain the history of tinnitus retraining therapy and why it is still of interest after over 30 years. Dr. Jastroboff, the floor is yours. You can present for about 20 minutes, and I will be at the end of that joining in to ask you some questions from the audience. Uh, thank you very much, Ben, for kind, uh, kind um, invitation and creating possibility of sharing some of my thoughts. Um, indeed, uh, tinnitus, tinnitus retraining therapy, TRT, uh, is around for over 30 years. Um, and indeed, as you mentioned, I'm a neuroscientist who just happened to be involved in tinnitus and decreased sound tolerance, although my main interest was brain, brain plasticity, auditory system, vestibular system, pain, etc. So how TRT started? Very frequent question which I have. Where TRT came from? Um, I got um, drug, to put it bluntly, into the tinnitus field at the beginning of 80s uh, by Professor Clarence Sasaki at Yale. I was on my sabbatical at Yale University in New Haven at this time. And at this time, uh, the situation was quite difficult. Um, there was no animal model of tinnitus, only clinical results uh, were available. And model of tinnitus and approaches and the research focus totally on the inner ear and at most auditory nerve. Results from literature were quite conflicting and it was difficult to find out what to believe in. So it started from the development of animal model of tinnitus in 83, which was published in 88. And during creating this model, I, I had to learn about tinnitus a lot. And I was reading everything which was possible and impossible. Um, as a result of this thinking about tinnitus, um, I create something which is known as a Neurophysiolog the neurophysiological model of tinnitus, and at the same time, basis of TRT. I presented this model to uh, Dr. Jonathan Hazel and Jackie Sheldrake in London in October 88. They liked the idea, start using this literally next Monday, some uh, reported positive results, which was very encouraging to me because whatever I proposed at this time was totally contrary to whatever was considered to be true about tinnitus. The paper, first paper, which described the neurophysiological model of tinnitus and basis of TRT was published in 1990, so ages ago. And the first center which was using TRT was Dr. Hayes in London in 89. Then in 1990, I created center at the University of uh, Maryland at Baltimore. Now we have uh, over some centers which are using different version of TRT in over 30 uh, countries. What was general idea of the model? What was new at this time? Um, the main concept was that for 80% of the people with tinnitus, who are just experiencing tinnitus, but have no problem with this signal, tinnitus signal, it is neuronal activity within auditory pathways, 
which is perce perceiving auditory cortex as tinnitus, is restricted to auditory system. And this is, as you can imagine, goal of treating patients to revert them, to push them into the category of experiencing tinnitus and not having problem with it. When we start having tinnitus patients, what model postulate that this is happening when this tinnitus related neural activity starts spreading to other structures in the brain, mainly, although not exclusively, to emotional system, so-called limbic system, and to autonomy nervous system. And then people with tinnitus became patient was suffering because of alternatives. And this was a revolution at this time uh, because I proposed going not only outside of cochlea, not only outside of auditory nerve, but totally outside of the auditory system. Auditory system in this model is secondary. It's needed because we are hearing tinnitus, but it's secondary. Now, signal, this tinnitus signal can travel to this different part of the brains through two pathways. One is pathway which involves our thinking, perception, evaluation, cognitive part. And the other one, which is going through subconscious part, through some structure, uh, which we very well know in the auditory system, without going through our perception and evaluation. So we have like a two loops. And this applies not only for tinnitus, but as well as I'll be talking about misophonia, when external sound is affecting auditory system. Sorry. So what is TRT? TRT is method aimed at habituation of negative reaction, reactions evoked by tinnitus and or due to a decreased sound tolerance, hyperacusis and misophonia. In case of a tinnitus, patients still perceive tinnitus, but patient is not bothered by it most of the time and can live a normal life. In the optimal situation, it's not bothered at all. And what's interesting and important in this as well, but once habituation of reaction is achieved, then habituation of perception, that means hearing tinnitus smaller and smaller proportion of the time, is achieved automatically because the brain automatically habituates all unimportant stimuli. There is no need for doing anything extra. And TRT, if we go to the specific mechanisms, uh, which I'll be not talking that much today, is focused on extinction, that means removal of subconscious condition reflexes connecting auditory system, the limbic and autonomic nervous system. And again, as I mentioned, we have two loops, subconscious and conscious, and this dominant, subconscious loop is dominant and is governed by control, by principle of condition reflexes. Now, next thing, which is uh, different from majority of other methods. Since treatment is aimed to work above on the side of tinnitus source, Therefore, etiology of tinnitus is irrelevant. We are not trying to do anything with tinnitus signal and tinnitus source. On practical, in practical term implementation, TRT consists of counseling, teaching, very intensive, and some therapy which are both based on the neurophysiological model of tinnitus. Now, how TRT is different from other methods? As I mentioned to you, we are trying to habituate tinnitus. What does it mean from the point of view of a mechanism? You have a tinnitus, which is causing, by the spreading this activity to other center in the brain, is causing negative reaction. Now, medication and, and cochlea, electrical stimulation, masking, uh, measure of the sound therapies, are trying to do something with tinnitus signal, remove it, abolish, to achieve uh, this famous tinnitus cure. On the other side, psychological treatment and medication aimed at uh, psychotropic medication at emotional system are trying to decrease or remove reactions 
induced by tinnitus. How TRT is different? TRT is not trying to do anything with tinnitus signal. It's not trying to act to act directly on mechanism responsible for reaction. It's trying to block spreading of this tinnitus signal to other parts of the brain so we do not have a reaction. So this is a fundamental difference between TRT um, and other methods. Now, treatment. Let's say a few words about tinnitus. But final goal of TRT is the tinnitus, hyperacusis, which roughly can be defined as a decrease tolerance to sound, which depends only on its acoustic characteristic. And misophonia, it is decreased sound tolerance only to specific sounds, cease to have an impact on patient life. And I believe this should be goal of any treatment, not only TRT, is primary for TRT. Now, what sometimes is creating confusion, I'm getting question, is tinnitus retaining therapy or is hyperacusis? Well, uh, the TRT was created to be brief, but from the very beginning, hyperacusis has been part of the model and TRT, even classification of a patient include uh, evaluation if patient have hyperacusis or not, treatment is different and so on. And misophonia, since it was proposed in 2001, we introduced concept of misophonia and first treatment for misophonia in 2001. And again, tinnitus signal might remain unchanged and normally is unchanged, but it will not induce negative reaction. But because of a way which emotional system is interacting with the auditory system, it's going this direction as well, loudness, perceived loudness of tinnitus on average is dropping to about half of initial value in case of a treatment with TRT. For hyperacusis, the goal is to restore normal level of tolerance to external sounds. And for misophonia, the goal is that bothersome sound called misophonic triggers cease to evoke negative reaction. And what are two main components of a treatment? I mentioned already intensive counseling and sound therapy. Counseling teaching is aimed at explanation of mechanism uh, of treaty disorder and physiological mechanisms used to achieve control of those disorders. So patients need to understand what's going on um, and having this knowledge, use this knowledge for his or her be the benefits. Sound therapy, the main role, not the only one, but main role is aimed at decreasing the strength of neuronal activity perceived as a tinnitus, or evoked by external towns, sounds, hyperacusis, misophonia. And again, implementation of this is highly individual, and again, it depends on category of a patient, on individual case, and it's not just simply get exposure to sound, avoid silence, and everything will be fine. Although, as I will be showing in a moment, it, it helps too. So, results of TRT. First thing, which I would like to stress that I believe as well as a, I think majority of the people involved in tinnitus, that we need validate questionnaire to assess the tinnitus severity. And from various uh, over 20 questionnaires, tinnitus handicap inventory, THI, and tinnitus function index, TFI, are frequently used. Um, I would like to, stress that we need something which is aimed at tinnitus severity and not just improving general well-being, uh, decreasing depression, and so on and so forth. You need something which is addresses tinnitus specifically. Now, decrease of 20 points of THI score has been shown to be clinically significant. It's as well postulated that 13 points of TFI is significant as well. Um, I would like to uh, point out that these are very lax uh, uh, criteria. And actually, for my patient, majority of my patient, they are getting better with 20 points improvement. Uh, but at least 20 points is something which you can consider minimal improvement on THI uh, to expect that patient will not suffer 
mm, that much or at all. And another point, which unfortunately is frequently uh, misinterpreted in literature. Clinically significant improvement on questionnaire need to be statistically significant. It normally is. But statistically significant improvement alone is not sufficient to claim clinically significant results. And that method, like, for example, transcranial medical, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which definitely is uh, giving some improvement, but this improvement is so small, um, typically, that it is, uh, it does not have a, uh, any practical implication for patients. But we have a 400 or more people in the study. This small improvement, which is not significant clinically, became statistically improvement. So what two things. And actually, in the meeting in, of TRI, Trinity Research Initiative in Nottingham, a special lecture, a special session are devoted only to this issue. Now, it's over 160 publications medline for Trinity retraining therapy, and majority, vast majority of them are showing positive results. Now, the first the study of Jim Henry was actually first to publish randomized clinical trial on over 100 patients are very interested. It was published in 2006, and I'll be talking about this in a moment. And a number of centers have shown a TRT success rate, a rate of around or above 80%. So main results which I would like to briefly uh, present. Henry study, which is TRT versus masking. SEMA is an excellent uh, center for cognitive behavioral therapy, considered to be one of the best, which was published in Lancet, again, excellent journal in 2012, and some of our results uh, present in different places. So what was Henry? It was one group was TRT, it was real TRT. Jim Henry, not new TRT, um, and implement this uh, uh, correctly. And another group, which he was calling tinnitus masking, I'm calling it, it sound relief therapy, because uh, patients were instructed to sound set at comfortable level, aiming at immediate perception of some relief masking, if possible. So it wasn't masking as Jack Vernon was teaching me. Counseling was minimal. So a result, which I'll be presenting you, which he uh, got, um, basically, is something which you can exp exp uh, expect if you just tell a patient, use more sound, use hearing aids, use sound generator, tabletop machine, whatever, 24-7, avoid silence, and, and that's it. And bye-bye. This result you can uh, uh, achieve if you are just using this, what Henry was calling masking. And here are, we have the results. Tinnitus, THI score, months of a treatment, and what we are seeing, but indeed, but just plain use of a sound, doing nothing else, is causing that you have an initial improvement for half a year, and then you have a plateau. And all the improvement is about 10, 12 points. So it's below this famous 20, but it's something. And please notice, you're not doing much of anything, just telling patients use sound. In the case of a TRT, the situation was quite different. First of all, we have a progressive improvement, which is proportional to, to time of a treatment, which is supporting postulate, but treatment was actually doing something, and longer you're using treatment, better results. And you get a finally difference of about 30 pounds. Um, proportion of a patient who uh, reports some improvement was getting after 18 months to close to 90% in case of a TRT. Uh, now, what is another very interesting uh, point is that uh, if you divide tinnitus patient the moderate, big, and very big problem, and using different uh, measures called effect size D, it should be above at least 0.5 to claim that this method is doing something. As you see in case of a masking, you have uh, some improvement, partly when it's a big problem, not very big problem, for moderate problem, you are not seeing much of an effect. It's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, which is great. Well, it's not great, but something. It's definitely doing something. In case of a TRT, first of all, again, you can see this 
linear dependence on the time, even for moderate problem, you have uh, about 1.3, so excellent results. And for very big problem, for catastrophic tinnitus, you have a, this D above two, which is incredible, incredible, powerful, and not really uh, heard about. Now, if we look deeper into the comparing Henry results and CBT results. And again, we're lucky because the CIMA and Henry were using THI, both of the groups. So you can compare head to head, apple to apples. So Henry, this just use the sound, don't cancel, don't do anything. You have a 12 points improvement. Again, this is 20 points. So on average is 12 to some people who are above 20, some below 20, but is, is something, right? And what is interesting that this group here, this green square, are result of CBT done by the best specialists in the world according to all the rules and regulation. And as you see, result of CBT are basically identical to results of Henry, who just said, use the sound and don't bother with anything else. Um, actually, the fact that in this group, uh, CBT, we have a control group for using different type of counseling, uh, some counseling, but different one, results are worse than just using sound. So inappropriate counseling can actually make situation worse. On average, they have only five points. In the case of a TRT, as you see, Henry's result improvement is close to 30%, and we are having uh, a same 30%, 30 points, sorry, 30 points uh, of improvement in our data, uh, but just we have a little bit faster, and as you see, we have a significant clear, it's not significant statistically or clinically, but clear improvement after one month, and from three months on, you have a clinical and statistically significant improvement. So it was a lot of changes in TRT implementation over 30 years. Misophonia was a huge change. A recognition of importance of condition reflexes and subconscious pathways. And this resulted, plus other things, extensive modification of implementation of counseling. Counseling is very different than whatever we were using 30 years ago. Although all the main principles are the same, but implementation and stress at different components is different. Now, in case of a sound therapy, we have again a number of changes. Precise measurement of a sound in the ear canal using real ear measurement, which caused a uh, revolution in how you are treating patient with uh, hyperacusis or misophonia. Um, we have a specific protocol for so sound protocol for misophonia and higher stress is put on hearing rehabilitation. Which kind of a changes we're observing? The main change is simply that when I was starting in the 90s, it was necessary to wait about one year to see clear improvement. Now, as I was showing you data, it's an average is one month with statistically significant improvement after three months. Uh, we have a higher effectiveness of treatment for decreased sound runs because previously cases for misophonia were basically not. Uh, successful and increase extent of the uh, help of hearing loss. So take home points. Um, not only our result, but result, results with publishing headline from many, many centers show significant improvement after clinically significant and statistically after treatment lasting three months or longer. I insist that all treatment lasts at least nine months to prevent relapse. And we are practically observing relapse extremely unfrequently. For tinnitus patient over 80%, for DST, we uh, published a recently paper, 83% uh, patient exhibited statistical and clinically significant improvement after 12 months. Results cannot be explained by placebo effect, by a number of reasons for this, but uh, it's an issue of a separate lecture, but definitely you cannot explain this result by placebo effect. And it's interesting that TRT offers a frame of reference, like a philosophy 
quadrating tinnitus, decreased sound tolerance, and tensor tympanic syndrome, fullness in the ear, pain in the ear, pulsation, which many of our patients are experiencing. And this can be successfully treated with TRT as well. Um, I mentioned that we are carrying on the courses. We, uh, two years ago, we have a last course in the United States, 50 course, and we are planning to have another course for professionals how to implement TRT, March, April, 2023. And again, my email for contact, or if you're interested in, in course, and my terrible, um, I, I, I have to apologize, my webpage is terrible, I have no time for uh, <coughs> working on it, but hopefully I will. Thank you very much for your patience, and I'm very happy to answer any question we, which you might have. Thank you, Dr. Jastrobov. Excellent presentation. We love the data and the science. And I personally love these flowers. The first question is from Kyle. Kyle asks, at the end of the day, Kyle asks, at the end of the day, what would you say is the most fundamentally important thing to do for those of us who are trying to reach habituation? As a patient? Yes, a patient named Kyle is asking, yes, 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 what is yes. the most fundamental thing yes. for habituation? Um, understanding. The crucial thing, knowledge is extremely powerful weapon. And understanding what's going on, having question answer, not having more question about tinnitus, what tinnitus is about, and what will happen if. Uh, for example, is my tinnitus going to be get, get worse when I'm losing hearing, and so on and so forth. All of these things are absolutely crucial to achieve habituation because otherwise, even if you achieve habituation at the subconscious level, the conscious level will be adding oil to the fire, uh, to tinnitus fire, and makes it, it will be making tinnitus worse. By the way, these flowers have a tinnitus related history. Um, I make this picture in Paris. Uh, it was really lovely, but it was time when I first time in my life. I discovered that I have as what I'm calling total habituation of tinnitus perception. It's a group of patients. I did a special study, 19.6%, uh, which after at least a year of treatment, cannot induce perception of tinnitus at least for, for a few hours, a few days, a few months. And for me, in my case, it's about uh, two weeks. So this I'm calling total habituation of tinnitus perception and those flowers reminds me uh, this uh, phenomenon. Thank you, Dr. Jastrobov. And you've worked with many patients. You've had some of the most challenging patients in the country who have very serious levels of tinnitus travel to you and have had positive results of their treatment. So not only do you have experience helping the tinnitus community, you personally are having these conversations. You're gu you've guided people from a to Z from stage one habituation to stage four, the resolution. Um, we have another question, which I think is important to ask. Um, this question is from Martha. Martha says, thank you for the presentation. She noticed that the success rate for TRT was approximately 80%. And she wanted to know, are there specific types of tinnitus that don't typically respond well to that treatment? She asks, objective tinnitus, pulsatile tinnitus, somatic tinnitus, do you have any comments for Martha? None of above. There are four categories of a patient, which I know when I'm getting this patient in my hand, which would be very difficult or impossible to treat. One, a patient which are on heavy dose of benzodiazepine, Xanax, Valium, Clonopin, and so on, because those drugs are decreasing brain plasticity, which is crucial for TRTs. One. Second, so-called flag waivers. It's a term that Jonathan Hazen created. People who are using the tinnitus uh, to attract social attention. Have pity of me. I have a, such a terrible tinnitus. Nobody's as bad as me. <clears throat> it's a second category. Third, people who have a financial interest on disability or are suing somebody for a million dollars because as a result of a car accident, uh, they got uh, uh, tinnitus. So those people you, you can know in advance that they might not, not recover. Um, and uh, uh, of course, there is, this is about 5% to 10% of the patient. I'm quoting this 80%, but in reality, it's possible to give 
some help to 90% of the patient, but not enough for me to classify them as a clinically significant. I do have a follow-up. So if a patient is using a medication that um, limits neuroplasticity, but they really need it for their sleep or their anxiety or just to be able to live and stay with us, um, is it possible that they, they can still habituate, but it's slower and that the drugs are affecting their neuroplasticity, but they still can have some progress and eventually hopefully get off of the medication? Uh, it depends on case. First of all, 72% of my patients are coming with sleep problem. And I have a very, very effective method of treating them with a proper use of the sun during the night. And for majority of them, the majority of them can get out of medication. They do not need medication for sleep. Second thing is antidepressants, generally speaking, are fine. You can take a bottle of Prozac a day and it still can be used of a TRT. The only specific drugs uh, or heavy duty psychotropic medication, which I use, for example, for bipolar, for schizophrenia, and I had such a patient too, uh, which is happening exactly as you point out, that uh, it just is possible to achieve habituation, but it's much more difficult. In my general approach is, and I have a, about one third of a patient coming on benzo and about far one third of a different psychotropic, don't change anything at the beginning. And gradually, a uh, patient with the help of his physician who is prescribing medication is getting gradually out of this and I develop special protocols for this. Uh, but certain drugs, if patient is coming to me having two milligrams of Xanax a day or more, I know that basically it's a fight up the hill and against wind and it's not much chance of helping this patient. It's an uphill battle, definitely. Well, Dr. Jastrobov, you've shared an amazing presentation for anyone who's watching. Just remember that this presentation was a summary of decades of experience and it was science and research based. Dr. Jastrobov, thank you so much for volunteering. I owe you one for coming to this. I really appreciate this and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm now looking forward to your presentation. Okay, wonderful. Well, let me get started. So my, my name is Dr. Ben Thompson. I'm here with Treble Health. And if you're listening live, uh, you may have seen some of our YouTube videos. Uh, you may have read some of our blog articles. Welcome to this community. Um, as you can see, there's over 300 individuals here live. And this is the end of the Tinnitus Relief Summit. Um, this is day two. This is the last presentation that I'm about to give. It's one of my favorite presentations that I've ever come up with. And I had a lot of fun preparing it for you guys. So it's going to be a combination of education, storytelling, and getting into uh, some tips and tricks for relief for tinnitus. Um, as you have been doing, you can comment here in the chat if you have any questions. If you uh, have a specific question for me or any audiologist on our team, please head over to the Q&A section on Zoom. And a few of us are here live who will be able to answer your questions. We are a team of licensed audiologists that are focused 100% on tinnitus and related conditions. My presentation tonight will focus on the evidence-based tinnitus treatment. We learned from the best ENTs in the world and how patients can get relief from tinnitus in less than three months. I'm showing on the screen right now, my brother Garrett and I, my brother Garrett is also an audiologist. I'm an audiologist. I was living in San Francisco, California. At the time, Garrett is in New York City, and we decided to uh, collaborate and create this online tinnitus offering called Treble Health. It started for me when I was working at UCSF Hospital, a major medical center in San Francisco. I was in the audiology residency program. I had a special interest in helping tinnitus patients, and I had a patient drive four hours from Lake Tahoe in the mountains of California all the way to the coast to the city of San Francisco to the university hospital and they had an appointment with me. I was providing tinnitus retraining therapy to that patient and they left the appointment so grateful and with so much relief and hope for their future. Previously, they had been to an audiologist, a local ENT doctor, and were not given effective solutions. So they had to go on the internet and eventually drive four hours to find us. 
I learned at that time that the demand for this kind of specialty work and the and the uh, the needs of our community here in the tinnitus world were very high, and that with technology and video conferencing and Zoom and remote devices for tinnitus, that there must be a better way. So I eventually started Treble Health. Um, you can see here my brother Garrett and I went to the National ENT Doctor Conference in Philadelphia this past September, and we had a Treble Health table. We were able to speak with dozens of ENT doctors. We asked them, what do you currently do for tinnitus? And we educated them on the treatment methods and the therapies that are available today and how they can change their perspective. So instead of telling their patient, hey, there's nothing that you can do for tinnitus, I don't have a medication or uh, surgery for you, but instead they can talk about things like tinnitus retraining therapy, sound therapy, cognitive strategies, one-on-one -on -one coaching. So this was very insightful for us. And at that presentation, at the National ENT Conference, um, I personally attended a, a, dis a discussion and a lecture by an ENT doctor from Europe that I'm going to um, expand on those findings from that presentation. An important disclaimer here, everyone's tinnitus is unique. Please make sure you've been medically evaluated by an ENT doctor. Make sure you've had a hearing test before you try anything on your own. Make sure you speak to someone who specializes in tinnitus before you try a treatment that you may have found online. Habituation or the improvement of tinnitus does not happen overnight. It is a slow and gradual process. You cannot force it. And no treatment protocol for any health condition has a 100% success rate. With that in mind, in this presentation, you're going to learn the best tinnitus management protocol. And just imagine how that would feel to have trust in that tinnitus treatment plan because it is based on evidence-based science. I wanna credit the researcher that uh, inspired my presentation today, and that is Tobias Kleinjung, um, MD, ENT doctor from Switzerland. Um, he gave a presentation at this ENT conference talking about how to manage chronic tinnitus and the best practices available from the ENT side of it. Let's, let's quickly review what happens when sound passes the ear and where is the origin of tinnitus. In the bottom left of the screen, you can see a small ear. This is a hearing organ, and this is what is behind your eardrum. There's a small organ that sits in the bony part of your inner ear, and that is where those little hair cells are that pass sound through up into your auditory brain. You can see here there is a nerve that connects your cochlea, and it travels all the way up through the different parts of the brain, eventually reaching the auditory cortex, where that auditory brain is coded like a piano. Well, certain cells in the hearing organ are connected to those same cells in the auditory brain. And most people have a high pitch tinnitus sound or a high pitch ringing sound. And between the ear and the brain, we can understand why that is. In the presentation that was uh, referenced here by the ENT doctor, there were two different models of tinnitus that were discussed. The neurophysiological model of tinnitus from Jastroboff and group, which was mentioned earlier by Dr. Jastroboff himself, and the global brain network model by de Ritter and group, which Dr. de Ritter touched on earlier today. The neurophysiological model of tinnitus. It has a few important points here. Number one, sound enters through the source, which is our ear, that's our cochlea. And then it goes to that auditory brain that I was mentioning. If we could point to anywhere in our system, our ear or our brain where the tinnitus uh, resides, it would be right here in the subcortical part of our auditory system, that part of our brain. So, Unfortunately, we can't go in there and turn down the volume. There's no dial we can set up. There's no device or surgery that can just quickly turn down the volume of our tinnitus. But we've learned, and the neurophysiological model of tinnitus teaches us that there's different pathways where we can indirectly uh, affect and promote positive changes to that part of the system. So one of them is through the ear. And the way we do that is with sound therapy. 
okay? The second part of the system is the limbic system. This is where fear, anxiety, worry, concern, um, your brain can process tinnitus like a threat. So we can promote positive changes to those systems by understanding what is tinnitus, by having all your questions answered about it, by realizing that the, react, the brain's reaction to tinnitus is a big cause of the problem. And when we can change that reaction, the tinnitus itself can get better. Other methods involve calming the central nervous system. So we see here the autonomic nervous system. Um, this is, an, this is a, a factor in the model of tinnitus. What this means is that if my body is on high alert, if my body's uh, reacting to the tinnitus as if it's a threat, as if I should be concerned and on edge, tight shoulders, not settled, not calm, but on edge, then that can send a message to the tinnitus that there may be a threat, that this may be something to be concerned about. Well, we can have positive changes to that system through stress reduction, guided breathing, et cetera. Finally, you see here on top that this is our, our waking state, sort of our active thoughts uh, and the stories about tinnitus. Um, by changing our perspective about tinnitus, this can also have a positive Im impact through the emotional centers of the brain. So I'm showing you this to, to explain how there are multiple indirect pathways that when you work on them through the tips and strategies and treatments that are available, that it indirectly can work on reducing and improving your tinnitus, which is ultimately the goal. So anything that's promoting habituation is working within one of these frameworks as laid out by Dr. Jastrobov. The second model, which has a lot of overlap in my opinion, is the global brain network model. And you can see that this graph almost looks like a laser field. Well, there's different sections here that are the dark circles. Those are referring to different areas of the brain. And the model realized that there's many different brain regions that are hyperactivated in patients who have bothersome tinnitus. It's not just the ear, it's not only the auditory brain, but it's actually a number of brain regions that are shown to be hyperactivated and out of balance. So the global brain network model similarly wants us to figure out how can we collectively bring these brain regions and these, these neurons back to a more neutral state? Because if we can do that and we can prove that it's happened, then likely the individual with tinnitus will have a, a big improvement to their quality of life. Again, here's a more simple uh, depiction of how there's different brain regions that can be hyperactivated and the global brain network model um, shows us that brain imaging has found these brain regions um, are all related for someone who has bothersome tinnitus. So if we can reverse engineer this and figure out how to improve these different regions of the brain through therapies, through treatments, then the result is likely to be improved tinnitus. If you guys have any questions here, drop them in the Q&A. Um, also love to see the chat very active. Um, great, so the brain's response to auditory changes. What, what really is the root cause of tinnitus, we may ask. Well, the researchers typically agree that tinnitus is caused by the brain's response to specific auditory changes. And that may be from a hearing loss, that may be from a stressful period of time in your life, that triggered this auditory change element that may be due to other causes of tinnitus. It's very common to have mild hearing loss and bothersome tinnitus. There's also neurological, stress-induced, um, somatic causes of tinnitus as well. The somatosensory element of tinnitus, this is referring to the jaw, the neck, TMJ, upper neck issues. Those are the most commonly cited um, examples of somatic tinnitus. So we have to diagnose what is the true cause of tinnitus and then provide a therapy and treatment that's targeted to that cause. Again, this protocol that I learned here is from one of the best ENT doctors in the world that focuses on tinnitus. And he was educating other ENT doctors about this, this method. So what I'm sharing here to you is if your ENT doctor perhaps seemed to brush you off or did not provide that much one-on-one uh, -on -one support, maybe your local audiologist 
didn't provide a treatment for you as well, um, this will get us back up to speed to explain what is, what is available. When all of these doctors are, are thinking about how they can help you, they each bring something unique to the table. So the core team of who's going to help you, in my opinion, is an ENT doctor and an audiologist. Other professionals that can really help include psychology, psychiatry, and other, men other mental health professionals, as well as some other specialties. The ENT's job is to rule out any sort of medical cause, something that can be fixed with a medication or a surgery. Well, that happens less than 1% for individuals with bothersome tinnitus that are here uh, tonight. A big part of their job is also to refer to the correct specialist that can take the baton and provide you the best care that's possible. The audiologist is responsible for analyzing is there a hearing loss? What is the cause of your tinnitus in relationship to hearing loss? Targeted sound therapy treatment and specialized programming of medical devices for tinnitus, and then teaching you skills to reduce anxiety, stress, and improve any sleep problems that you may have. That can lead to improved concentration and attention, as well as overall reduction in tinnitus. For those who do have a hearing loss, hearing aids are recommended and an audiologist is definitely the best fit to get those properly programmed for your tinnitus. We have a few quotes here about different studies that touch on the importance of using ear level devices for tinnitus management. And they provide the constant sound therapy. It's something that I, I learned when I took the course with Dr. Jastroboff. Um, as an audiologist myself, the importance of consistent daily use of sound therapy, as was mentioned in Dr. Jastrobov's presentation, following the treatment, using the sound therapy, continuing the approach for habituation, he's mentioning for, for nine months to make sure that once you stop, things don't come back or uh, return to their previous level. So what this shows is Treating tinnitus is an ultra marathon. It's a slow ongoing process, but when we take it at three months chunks, we do see significant improvements and hearing devices are a big part of that. Um, this is an interventional study on the benefits of hearing devices. And there were positive results in a vast majority of the cases. Some studies demonstrated no change in tinnitus distress as well. You've heard of this topic here, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, counseling with elements of CBT, um, and that is recommended in this presentation. That is something that can help us get out of cat catastrophic thoughts about tinnitus. When we can remind ourselves that tinnitus is not dangerous, that most people do learn to habituate, as Dr. Jastorov said earlier, when we can have all of our questions answered so we're no longer living in a fear state or wondering what if, or asking ourselves, I don't know if I really have the right um, management plan here. But when we can get clear on all of that, it helps calm the limbic system in the brain. And through that brain network, that global brain network and the neurophysiology model, the tinnitus starts to calm. Your brain starts to react less and treat it less as a threat and filter it out more as a background sound. I love this graphic because it gives everyone in our community a guideline of what they can aim for in terms of their goal and the work that you're putting in, where is it leading to? So most of us who are here tonight are in either stage one or stage two of tinnitus. And stage one of habituation is when tinnitus is the most intense. It's often accompanied by loss of sleep, high awareness, high annoyance, frequent worrying and anxiety. It's oftentimes in this situation uh, very, very bothersome, a, a moderate to severe level. Stage two, things start to get better. There's periods of time where tinnitus is forgotten or softer, sleep improves, more acceptance, less annoyance. Eventually, stage four is where tinnitus is rarely noticed. We can quickly redirect our attention away from it when we hear it. We might, we might hear it or perceive it, be aware of it, less than 20% of waking hours. And when we think of success stories in the tinnitus community, it's in that stage four of habituate. People make it to stage four of habituation. 
So let me know in the chat right now um, where you are, if you know which stage you're in, so that we can get a pulse, get a sense of how everyone's doing here. I know, and if you're if you're someone who's worked with treble health and or has worked with a different audiologist for tinnitus retraining therapy, um, let us know in the chat as well um, of the, of that experience of helping people go to stage four, of helping people achieve relief. So step one of the protocol, see an ENT doctor, rule out a medical cause of tinnitus. If you do have a jaw issue with your TM TMJ, go to a dentist. If you have a cervical spine or a neck issue, go to a doctor of osteopathy or a similar medical professional that can take the next step in terms of uh, diagnosis and providing treatment. That in effect could improve your tinnitus because if your tinnitus is partially caused by jaw or neck issue, this is what uh, is recommended for how to fix it. Step two, work with an audiologist, ideally one that is specialized in tinnitus. We wanna rule out hearing loss or if found, treat tinnitus and hearing loss with hearing aids that are programmed for tinnitus. We do this at Tribal Health and we find it has the best results for improving tinnitus, right? If you'd have both conditions, you might be thinking, well, the hearing is not really a problem. I don't need hearing aids. And we're telling you, they help your tinnitus. There's a secondary benefit of your hearing, of course. If you were told that you have normal hearing or a slight hearing loss, uh, we recommend treating the tinnitus with ear level tinnitus maskers. We have a lot of success with that. That's the tinnitus retraining therapy model as well. If there's hyperacusis or sound sensitivity, then follow the same as above. So again, we're going through this protocol, step one, step two, I'm really summarizing here. There's a lot of fine, fine tuned details, but I think this is very important. Step three, sound therapy. Well, you can use this with tinnitus maskers, ear level devices. That would be our top choice. A sound machine that can play any of the different sounds that we, that we, that we listed here on the screen, including pink noise, natural water sounds, white noise, um, switching the sound every now and then to provide um, some variance can be beneficial if you're having a spike or need to just um, switch up the sound you're listening to with crickets or other soothing sounds. We recommend listening to this uh, consistently and having a habit of prioritizing sound therapy. Until you reach stage four of habituation, having sound therapy helps your brain promote the neuroplasticity. Remember, this is not the only piece we need because the CBT strategies, as well as the one-on-one -on -one education and counseling, um, we heard it earlier in today's presentation that um, perhaps the most important thing we can do is have the right information and understand exactly what's happening with our own brain, with our own body and with our ears. If there's doubt, if there's confusion, if there's uh, fear, then the limbic system has a hard time turning off into that rest and digest state where the body can settle as well. So you might be wondering, well, uh, what's the difference between the educational piece of TRT and the one-on-one -on -one, uh, CBT element? Um, maybe with a therapist, there's some similarities and there's some differences. Um, typically, that's something that your audiologist or whoever you're working with will be able to tell you what their special training is in. Some people have a training in CBT. Others have a training in TRT. Both strategies can be helpful, in my opinion. And most audiologists typically are more trained in the TRT style approach, which is a detailed education explanation and personalized coaching on what your tinnitus is, what's the science behind it, so you can understand and get out of that sense of, I have, I have more, more and more questions, I'm not sure what's going on, and then into the habituation training plan. Very good. Now is the time where I can answer a few quick questions, and then we're going to transition next into um, sharing some details about our program. So my name is Ben Thompson, and then it's been a pleasure. Let's get to answering some questions. Does anyone have a question that's front and center that would be good for me to answer? Anyone on the tribal health team? All right, so the question I'm going to handle here is about here, step three, 
into step four. So the question is, how do I know that I'm doing enough of these two? And what is the recommended amount of sound therapy? What is the recommended amount of CBT? For sound therapy, the recommended use is to use it during the day for most waking hours and to have it at a level that's softer than your tinnitus, what we call the mixing point or just below it is good. And keep that level of sound, whether that's played through a smartphone, through a, a sound machine, through good speakers around you, or ideally our top choice through ear level devices like tinnitus maskers, what are also called ear level sound generators, have the sound going for most waking hours of the day. If you're in a place that has natural sound enrichment, like uh, you're playing music or you're out in a place where there's a lot of natural noise, then in, my advice would be you don't have to use the devices on your ears in that situation. There's natural sound enrichment. But when you're in quieter places, when you're indoors, especially, and you're at home, that's absolutely the right time to have sound therapy on. Most of our patients who use ear level devices use them for most hours of the day. That's what you do on a daily basis. How about overall? Most, pa most patients are using sound therapy in our, in our practice between six and 12 months. Like Dr. Jastroboff alluded to, there's benefits to keep using the sound therapy so you can ensure your habituation is settled into that stage four and there's no chance that you're going to relapse or go back. In terms of the one-on-one the -on -one coaching, and in this case, remember, I'm sharing the protocol that was recommended by uh, the ENT doctor at the ENT conference. So their focus was on CBT strategies. One-on-one -on -one coaching, whether you can get it for CBT, whether you can get it for the TRT counseling piece of it, I will take either of them over nothing. As an audiologist, we focus more on the TRT style approach and we take elements of CBT strategies that we find that are helpful. So you can see here on the screen how often one-on-one -on -one appointments are typically every one or two weeks in this method. In our system, it's every two weeks for a few months until you can self-manage your condition. And there's daily practice on your own because changing your thoughts and reactions towards tinnitus and the emotions behind it and the thoughts that come up, it's not an easy practice. It's actually quite challenging, as you may know. So it takes time, repetition, guidance, and practice as well. So Stephen asks, doesn't TRT include CBT? And I would say, no, TRT does not include CBT, um, but let's not get too caught up in the, the, the minute differences between the two. TRT includes one-on-one -on -one personalized coaching. CBT also includes one-on-one -on -one personalized co coaching. So they're both a form of uh, therapy in that sense, whereas TRT is more education and counseling based. CBT is more um, therapy and emo changing emotional reactions based. Excellent. How many, please write yes in the chat if any of you would be interested in learning about our tinnitus program that was created from this research and really from all the research that exists on tinnitus. Um, I see Kiwe, Jim, Sandy, Jen, and others saying yes in the chat, which is great. Thank you guys for the support. We're going to move on now to show the tinnitus treatment program with Treble Health and what we've found. So this is the newest data that we have. And I asked one of our team members to pull this data just earlier today. So what we've been um, doing here is we ask the individuals who work with us at the beginning beginning to complete the tinnitus functional index. It's a questionnaire that gives us a score of tinnitus from zero to 100. And then we ask them to follow our protocol, which includes the protocol that was laid out here on the presentation, as well as whatever we can use to give you a personalized treatment plan for you. And we also measured that score three months later. Uh, what we wanna see in, in the tinnitus community is that the tinnitus functional index, we wanna see that score improve at least 13 points for it to be considered a clinically significant improvement. So you can see here on the bottom of the screen that within just three months, we had 69% of our patients who come to us with moderate severe degrees of tinnitus. 
69%, over two thirds of those patients had a clinically significant improvement within three months. Now I know from the, the Dr. Jastroboff research in this retraining therapy, that often the full treatment window of the treatment effect can be between six and 18 months. So when we track these numbers further out after three months, at six months, at 12 months, at 18 months, the numbers get better and better into the data of the tendinous retraining therapy data set, which is between 80 to 85% of patients keep a clinically meaningful improvement in tinnitus, um, and then they're habituated, and that's what we go for. That's our goal. Um, so you can see the average reduction in that score was 26 points in our sample, and that was about twice of the clinically significant level. So we're really happy to share that. I wanted to share some elements of our program and some individuals who have come through this program. And if any of you are here you know, in, the, in the chat live or watching on YouTube, uh, leave a comment because you've shared your story so that we could share it to others who need hope and encouragement. Treble Health gave me hope for my tinnitus when no one else could, says Randy. My medical provider told me there was no cure and gave me some pills, but Treble Health provided expert counseling and therapy. Their methods provided great relief and gave me back my life. Mark says that Treble Health helped him enormously in a fairly short amount of time when others couldn't. Two months later, his tinnitus is nearly gone and he's sleeping better. You may have a question, does sound therapy work? Well, we've shared to you before of what happens, but does it work? Um, the research suggests it works. Our own clinical experience suggests it works. And we have a few quotes here. Bubba explains how within three months, he basically habituated and his tinnitus maskers were a big part of that. He plans to use them as long as he has tinnitus. Well, we know that three months is not the end of his treatment because there's a long tail that we want to ensure it's, it's successful and do everything we can to keep those gains. But improvements within three months is something that we wanted to highlight. And Steve also mentioned that he took the program very seriously. He wore tinnitus maskers for 12 hours a day. And he wouldn't worry if you have a thought of, oh my God, do I need to wear these devices for the rest of my life? Is this a forever thing? I don't know if I'm ready for that. Well, he says that he wouldn't worry about using them as a long-term thing because his tinnitus was a five or a six volume at the beginning. But after using the devices, after using sound therapy, it's now a one or a two on his um, tinnitus scale. So that is my presentation from the educational side of things. And uh, it's been an honor to host the Tinnitus Relief Summit. Um, we have a ton of questions coming in and we have our audiologists who've answered 57 questions tonight um, in the Q&A. So now is the time where we did prepare a special offer for anyone who's been learning about tinnitus and looking for solutions around it. Um, we did prepare this special offer, which is going live tonight. And I wanted to invite anyone who would like to learn about it to stay on here for another 15 or so minutes where I can explain the details of the Tinnitus Awareness Week special offer that my team and I have put together. Uh, write in the chat, yes, if you want to hear it. And I'll just add as those answers are coming in that we asked ourselves with our team of audiologists, what is everything we could possibly give to our patients and to our community to have the most likely improvement with tinnitus? What tools are available? What one-on-one -on -one personalized support? What products? What devices? What programs? And we put all of that together in this offer, which I'm going to share with you and see Suzanne and Sherry and Rick and Robert and many others saying yes. So thank you guys. Let's continue on. Uh, the first piece of the offer that we're providing is a pair of treble tinnitus maskers. I believe this is the absolute best tool for habituation in terms of a physical tool that you can rely on and use every single day. The devices reduce your awareness of tinnitus, helping your brain habituate naturally. When used in combination with everything else we're providing in this offer, it's going to lead to a, a high effectiveness rate for promoting habituation. So those are the treble tinnitus maskers, an essential piece, an essential tool for habituation. 
uh, we're going to go through a list of very helpful bonuses that our team put together of things that we're sure are going to help most of you who use them. Number one is the tinnitus sleep headband. It's a surprisingly helpful Bluetooth headband and you wear it when you sleep. It can help you fall asleep, stay asleep with tinnitus. You can play your favorite sound therapy tracks through the headband. And it's something that if you have tinnitus in both ears or even one ear, it can be very beneficial to try. The second bonus is the Sound Oasis sound machine. This is our top rated sound machine. It has a whole combination of different sound profiles, including our favorites like pink noise, white noise, natural water sounds, crickets, and other soothing nature sounds. When we, when we, when we focus on sound therapy, it's not only the tinnitus maskers, it's also the sound machine. With the combination of those two, during the day and at night, now you have sound therapy all the time. So between these three devices that we've just shown, the devices on the ears, the headband for at night when you sleep, and then the sound machine, which can be used during the day or at night, it covers all of your bases with sound therapy and it ensures that you're doing everything you can on the sound therapy side of things. Bonus number three is five private video visits where an expert audiologist on our team at Treble, who's specialized in tinnitus, will provide one-on-one -on -one personalized coaching, the educational counseling piece, the one-on-one -on -one coaching piece about stress, anxiety, giving you back that sense of control and helping you work through the complexity of the mental, emotional, daily challenges that come along when you have tinnitus. Bonus number four this is something that I started over two years ago, a group coaching program for tinnitus. And we have the largest group coaching uh, program for tinnitus. We meet every two weeks. And if you're uh, a patient of ours, you're invited to join. So this bonus means that every two weeks, you'll have a positive peer-to-peer -peer group where you can check in with, and we have constructed guided sessions by our audiology team with different breakout rooms where you can be with groups of people that have symptoms or are in a certain stage of tinnitus, just like you. And the feedback we get from this group is quite something. Bonus number five is priority email and text. I was reviewing the other day that one of our patients, their favorite aspect of our program was that they can email their audiologist and get a quick answer back so that they're never wondering and staying in fear about certain questions they had. As was mentioned earlier, having your questions answered is a big piece of what can help your brain habituate. And finally, bonus number six, this is something that I created called the Guided Breathing and Relaxation Course. This is an audio course which has seven days of guided breathing and relaxation tips. So this helps us defocus from tinnitus, settle the mind and settle the body. All this together, it's, it's really, like I said earlier, it's everything that could help you with tinnitus from our perspective, checking in with our team. We were asking ourselves, what all can be beneficial for someone with tinnitus? So we put it all together here. You can see the total value here is about three and a half thousand dollars for what's all included. And these are hand selected after years of careful um, trial and testing and looking at research and evidence to figure out what is actually helping our community get better with their tinnitus. So as I said earlier, this is a special offer that we're just announcing here for everyone who's live. And it's a tinnitus week special offer. It's going to go until Tuesday. So it's available right now. And I encourage you to check it out. Um, to move forward, the, the total cost, it's you reserve it now for $300. So it's a $300 deposit to get started. And then it's only $204 per month over a 12 month period. Those are no interest payments. We've put this together because the feedback we've gotten is that this program is very effective. And this bundle of the three physical devices, the five one-on-one -on -one appointments, the group sessions, the guided relaxation course and the priority email and text is really giving our patients what they need to get over the hump and promote habituation and treatment of tinnitus. So the total offer there is $2750 and this is the, the payment terms. And fortunately there is a 45 day money back guarantee. So no questions asked. If you're not satisfied with it, if you change your mind, there is a 45 day period where you can try them and work with us and have those one-on-one -on -one sessions 
And if anything wasn't meeting your standard or what you were hoping for, then there will be a 100% refund money back guarantee. Let's talk about how it works. Um, there's many of you who have come to just amazing sessions here at the Tinnitus Relief Summit. And uh, I think you may benefit from this program as well as uh, you heard other, other options for tinnitus, but I believe what we're offering here is a true comprehensive package with some experts who can really help you. So how it works, number one, is that tonight you would reserve the bundle for $300. That's a fully refundable deposit if you change your mind later or if we decide it's not the right fit for you, then it would be fully refundable. Um, tomorrow, an audiologist from Treble Health will speak with you to confirm the details, um, making sure we talk about your history with tinnitus, the shipping information, all of that. Step number three is that if we confirm here that this would be a good fit to move forward with the tinnitus week bundle, that we would ship the physical products to your house in, and they would arrive within five to seven business days. The other components of the bundle, the one-on-one -on -one appointments, the guided breathing course, the text and email, the group coaching, that would all start immediately. So we would get you onboarded to that tomorrow and we can start getting you help as soon as possible. Um, after that, you would have monthly payments for 12 months of $204. And again, those are no interest payments. Um, we've gotten feedback that it's uh, preferred to have those monthly payments, although there is an option to buy it outright if you didn't want to go ahead with the monthly option. How to claim the special offer for Tinnitus Awareness Week. Um, we have a website here you can go to treblehealth.com slash offer. This has all the information listed tonight, including a button where you can reserve your spot. And then you would speak with us tomorrow and we would confirm all the details and hopefully provide you the real benefit of learning all this information, right? So if we learn a lot about exercise, physical exercise, running, um, you know, getting stronger, but we don't implement it, it's almost, uh, it's almost a lost opportunity. So similarly with tinnitus, we're learning all this great information. That's wonderful. There's, there is benefit to that. But if we're not putting it in practice with the sound therapy, with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, et cetera, then there may be a lost opportunity there. So the website here is listed on the bottom and in, in a, on a new tab, you can put this in um, for example, I'll put it in on my phone, treblehealth.com slash offer, and it will bring you to a page that looks like this. And if you scroll down, you can see there's the bundle that was listed, just like you see on the screen here. And there's a nice blue button where you can reserve the next step and schedule yourself to work with our team. So we're going to keep this up on the screen now. And we have some common um, questions that are asked that we're going to um, explain here. So if there's any questions that are coming live in the chat and in the Q&A, now is a good time for us to answer them. And if you guys would like to move forward or learn more about this, then you can ask us a question here in the live chat or the Q&A and our audiology team will be able to help you. Um, I'm gonna stick around here and answer any questions that come through. And we just got a notification that um, at least one of you has decided to move forward with the Tinnitus Week special offer here, this bundle of physical products, the, the services, and the guided course, and all of it's listed all here on the screen. Um, that's great. We're excited to work with you. Let's answer the first question that's come in. Question one, how long does it take to get the bundle? So as I said earlier, the physical items arrive in five to seven days. And the appointments, the guided breathing course, and the group coaching recordings, um, those are available tomorrow. We can get you those as soon as possible. We'll get you onboarded to our system. And we're typically able to see you for your first appointment within three days. So that's excellent. Okay, let me see here what else. So how do I get started and what happens after I reserve my bundle? Great question. So you can reserve now for $300. Um, that's all that we need to save your spot. And that's fully refundable if you were to change your mind or you're not a good fit. Um, the website here is the one linked on the bottom. You can type that into 
a uh, new tab on your computer, or you can type that in on your phone. It should work fine on both devices. And once you go to that website, all you have to do is use the payment, use the secure payment system to reserve your spot. Um, after that, what happens next is you will schedule a time tomorrow to speak with one of our expert audiologists. If you're busy tomorrow or if that can't, that can't work for you, then you're able to speak with us on Monday or Tuesday as well. Um, at that time, your audiologist will confirm the details, asking you questions like, when's the last hearing test you had? Talking, talk to me a bit more about your tinnitus. And, if, and once we decide that this is a great fit for you, that we believe this was going to work and help you so much with this, then we're going to uh, get you onboarded for everything else that's included here in the bundle. And then as was mentioned, there's the low monthly payments for the next 12 months. Any other questions? I have uh, Garrett Thompson in the chat as well, who seems like he's helping you guys out. Hi, Ben, we have a couple of people asking if they already have hearing aids, um, what is the best course of action for them? Definitely, if you already have hearing aids, uh, that's great. And number one, we wanna make sure that they're programmed effectively for your tinnitus. So that's something that our team can help you with. Um, number two is that if you already have the devices and you want the rest of the information that's here in the bundle, if you, if you want the other aspects of the bundle, but you already have uh, tinnitus maskers, or maybe you already have hearing aids, for example, if you have a hearing loss, then what can happen is you can choose to work with us. We have a monthly plan, it's $250 per month, and it includes group coaching, and you're able to meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. So that's a program that we're more than happy to work with you on. Um, it is on our website, and maybe Garrett, you could link that section of our website where patients can sign up. Um, if you do onboard and work with us, then we're absolutely able to um, include all the other aspects of the bundle. And if there is a fee associated with any of them, we'll let you know. I see Nono asks, are any of the costs reimbursable by an HSA account? And the answer there is yes, they are. Um, Treble Health is reimbursable by an HSA account. We have another question here about, um, does this apply to individuals in the United States, other countries? I did not mention that, my apologies. This is only for individuals in the United States. Um, due to regulations, we're only able to provide this healthcare to patients within the United States. If you are outside of the United States, I would recommend that you search for a tinnitus specialist in your local area, try to find the best audiologist in your local area, or go to a university hospital who may have a good audiology and ENT clinic. Um, that's where I would recommend getting the best care. And if you have further questions, please email us, contact at treblehealth.com and we'll be able to help you. Okay, any more questions here? All right, I have a good question here. Um, why can't I just use AirPods? Why do I need to use all these other devices for sound therapy? I have headphones, maybe they look something like these headphones, or maybe you have AirPods. Yeah, it's a great question. So um, what you might not realize is that the tinnitus maskers, when they go inside of the ear canal, they're not fully blocking the ear canal. So it's not like an earplug or a headphone that blocks and what we call occludes your ear canal, but instead they sit in the ear canal the tinnitus maskers and the rubber tip that goes in there, it has natural holes in it, which means that you're able to hear ambient sound around you the same as before. So it's not going to block your ears and make it hard to hear other people. And instead, it's going to keep your ear canals naturally hearing everything else the same way as before. But on top of that, you have a low level soothing sound therapy that plays in your ears. Um, using AirPods and other headphones, it's not a bad thing, but it's just not the best. It's not a bad thing to get started with, but if you're really taking this seriously, maybe today and yesterday you realized, okay, this is going to take me some months of hard work and consistency and guided treatment. Um, 
That's not something you can do with headphones. There are medical devices that have been created for tinnitus, and that's what the tinnitus maskers are. So let's use them to their best ability and take this opportunity to treat your tinnitus the way that um, the devices have been designed to. And Simone, you ask a good question. Um, what about other kinds of headphones that leave the ear canal open? Um, I wouldn't really use those either. If you were just dealing with tinnitus for a month or a few weeks, then using those kinds of headphones might be helpful. But as we've shown with our research, with our experience, often this is a process of three months or more, six months or more. So we can't use just normal everyday headphones um, and expect the same results as medical devices for tinnitus. Um, similarly, we can't go to a professional who doesn't experience, who, who doesn't specialize in tinnitus and expect them to provide the same one-on-one -on -one coaching and care as an audiologist like those on our team who are 100% focused on tinnitus every day. Great questions though. Um, just as a reminder for anyone who's still curious, I do recommend you go to this website listed below where you can review more of the details. We worked hard to make that available for you. So check that out, treblehealth.com slash offer. And we'll be hanging out here for another 15 minutes or so to answer any questions. So Lisa asks, I have tinnitus in my left ear, no hearing in that ear. Will the masker still help? Um, I want one of our audiology member, audiology team members to, to answer Lisa's question in the chat if possible, um, as well as any other personal individual question that you may have. Um, let us know in the Q&A or the chat and we'll do our best to answer. And if you have a more, um, if you like more personalized answer, we do offer a free consultation that we'll be able to also include in the chat for anyone in the United States. Hi, Ben. Uh, we have Mary asking, is this TRT? Is that what we're, ta we're talking about with this bundle? Depending on which provider you work with on our team, there are some slight variabilities in terms of who has TRT training, and who has other techniques that are similar, but not technically TRT. As a whole, TRT, tinnitus retraining therapy, includes the one-on-one -on -one individual counseling and education piece of it, that one-on-one -on -one coaching, plus the sound therapy. So this is absolutely covering the sound therapy component of TRT, and that's the protocol we follow. For the one-on-one -on -one coaching piece of it, we personalize it in a way, which is very similar to TRT, but I wanted to make that distinction. I have a question which says, uh, does, it, does it work? How do I know this is going to work for me? It's a great question. That's obviously the most important question is, will this provide the benefit that I need? Um, we recently ran a study and we offer a 45 day free trial. So that money back, that money back guarantee that 45 day period, anyone who works with us could you know, say, no, this isn't working for me, or I don't see the benefit in this. I, I'm stopping. And the numbers that we ran showed that 82% of our patients keep the bundle and that they're benefiting from it in those first in those first 45 days, there's, there's, they're telling us, this is the right path for me. I like what I've seen so far and either I'm better or I'm getting better or this is the right program for me. So hopefully that data speaks to that point of does it work and to know that there is a, a safety element here that if for any reason you didn't wanna move forward, um, there is that period of time. Following up on that question, um, how long does it take to work? So for us, we've found that more than two thirds of our patients 
show meaningful improvement in less than 90 days. That was described earlier on a previous slide. Do we accept insurance? Insurance companies, they rarely cover tinnitus treatment. However, if yours does, then we will provide the documentation and codes that you may need to submit for reimbursement for our services. So it's a great question. And of course, we want to use any insurance benefit that you may have. I'm seeing in one of our um, Treble Health side chats here that we have multiple individuals who have signed up for the program. So we're really excited to work with you all. And I wanna give a big shout out as we're wrapping up tinnitus, the Tinnitus Relief Summit that um, this wouldn't have been possible without all of our amazing presenters from different countries, without our whole team at Treble Health, um, the patient care team, marketing team, the audiology team, and many others. Um, and of course, without all of you participants showing up, being engaged, asking questions, and all of that important information. So uh, without all of you, this really couldn't have been possible. And you can guarantee we're going to do this next year. Hopefully by that time, you won't need to attend because your tinnitus has been treated and you're habituated.